Alright, how's everyone doing? Welcome to From Z to A, Alphabetical Interviews with Zach Anderson. I am Zach Anderson. Today we are here at Sage Sound Studios in Shelton for the 31st edition of Monsters of Acoustic Rock, and I am joined by Ashley Hamill. So, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, no Zach. Problem. So, I'm going to ask you the difficult questions, as long as they have something to do with the letters of your name. Sure, yeah. Alright, so we're going to start with A. Uh, how much does an audience affect your set? Uh, do you tend to change things up depending on how people react to certain songs, or do you tend to stick with uh, what you planned out ahead of time? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, I come from a theater background. I started in musical theater in, in school. Mm -hmm. so. My performance is always very audience-centric, depending on how they're feeling. Like, a lot of times I'll rehearse, uh, you know, the songs that I kind of want to play where I am, and then when I get there, I'll take the temperature of the room and then write a set list while I'm there, for sure. Um, and then, like, I just played a festival, you know, in the regular space outside, and I ended up playing all of my little funny... Um, like happy, exciting tunes, which you know, sometimes I don't get to play my mellower stuff, mm -hmm. but you do have to adapt to the crowd because you want them to be a part of it, right? Right. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, now, what is your songwriting process? Do you tend to uh, start with music or lyrics? Does it vary song to song? Uh, it does vary song to song. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a super prolific songwriter. Um, of all of the things that you do as a musician and as someone who's working in, in the local industry, I feel like my songwriting is the thing that might be like more on the bottom of my list, you know? Mm -hmm. And I and I say that, and I don't mind. Like, I like the songs that I write, but I'm not out here every week writing a song. Right. So it does kind of change depending on where I'm at and kind of what season of the of the um, the process I'm in. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm recording, so I'm not really writing too much. Yeah. Gotcha. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, what has Harry Potter meant to your uh, music career? Um, I would not have a music career if it wasn't for <laughs> Harry Potter. I wouldn't have one. They were the people who first, that was my first community, mm -hmm. you know, like when I was a teen writing music and even when I was in college writing music, the local scenes, I grew up in Berlin, Connecticut, I spent high school, my high school years there, and a lot of those guys are like professional musicians now right. in the hardcore scenes, in like post-punk, and like emo, and like other things that I don't really know about. So I hung out with those dudes, but like I didn't have anything to offer that scene. That mm -hmm. scene didn't have anything to offer me. So when I found Wizard Rock, and then when I found this community of just like Harry Potter fans who were all nerds and book people, mm -hmm. and like a lot of them were young women, all of a sudden I had an audience, and that has been huge for me in like launching uh, to where I am now. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, find their audience at different times, and one of their main struggles is to find their audience. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was like I had it built in for my Harry Potter community. Right. Uh, and so I've been hugely blessed with that, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so um, other than Harry Potter, uh, what themes or topics do you tend to write about in your lyrics? Uh, I write about love a lot. Mm -hmm. I write, you know, lately I've been writing about identity stuff okay. and about reconnecting with... Um, my heritage and my identity on those lines, that's always been a constant search for me growing up here in Connecticut as a mixed person mm -hmm. um, who didn't really have a place to belong to. So that's always been at the forefront of my mind and so it definitely comes out in my songwriting. And I've been leaning a little bit more towards that um, rather than writing just love songs every time. So. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so. Uh... Now, what has been your most uh, embarrassing moment you've had on stage? Yeah. Well, I dead ass fainted on my face once, uh huh, in Indonesia. Oh. Uh, it was over when I was there in February, and I had just gotten there. I'm in my uh, home city, where most of my family lives in South Sumatra, mm -hmm. and I had I went to Indonesia to like pursue some music connections, mm -hmm. to play some shows, meet people, like that's what I went there, for, yeah. you know, and also to see my family, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, I got there, and it was my first weekend, and I'm thinking like, oh my god, I'm so anxious, what if this is all like a failure, what if I came here and it's pointless, and I had my first opportunity to jump on stage with this band who was playing at this like smoky bar, mm -hmm. I'm like jet lagged, anxious, I started drinking beer, okay, <laughs> I'm dehydrated because it's super hot, the smoke is everywhere, I'm smoking some cigarettes, okay, so I get up there and then I'm like, what song do we want to play? And we say Bruno Mars, of all the Bruno Mars <laughs> songs, 
they choose um, grenade. Okay. And it goes like, da 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 get the grenade for ya. And it's like, oh, up here. <laughs> so I get through a verse and a chorus, and halfway through the verse, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, oh no, I'm like, oh, like, oh this isn't gonna end well. I'm feeling like, oh, like, I'm, I'm not breathing right. Um, I'm already feeling a little bit faint, and I recognize that feeling from earlier on in my singing career where like I didn't know how to breathe well. Right. So I was like, oh shit, hang on, hang on. <laughs> sure enough, after that first chorus, I, I yeah, I smashed to oh. the ground, and it was like dead silence in that place, and I'm just thinking, oh my god, all of these Indonesian people are like, this drunk American <laughs> chick is here, drunk and falling over. I want it. I was just mortified, you know. Here I am talking myself up. I'm like, I'm a singer. <laughs> you know, it was 30 people in the room. My cousin was there to help me out. You know, dust off my ego. No harm done. And you know what? That was my first weekend. Got that over with. Yeah. And every weekend after that, I like hit. It's so hard. It was an amazing trip. I accomplished what I wanted times ten. <laughs> so like because I fucked up right, in the right. beginning. <laughs> awesome. ah, long story. Yeah. <laughs> chop awesome. it, chop it, chop it down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, uh, what ex do you have any exciting plans this upcoming year? Uh, any uh, writing, recording? Uh, do you plan on touring at all? Yeah. I mean. It's been four years since I released my last EP, and I'm finally coming out with my full-length mm -hmm. Wizard Rock concept album. It's nice. called WZRD, Wizard Pop Radio. <laughs> and it's like if you were in the wizarding world and you turn on the radio, those are my songs, right? Because right? I write very like pop, kind of mainstream like songs. Yeah. So uh, that's my whole vibe. Um, so I'm putting that out. We are in the final mixing stages right now uh, in October 8th, 2018. So. Once that comes out, I'm doing a, a, a crowdfunding campaign for it mm -hmm. to just spread the word and get some pre-sales and raise some money and some awareness. Uh, I might go on tour for it once the spring hits. You know, I'd like to just at least hit up some house shows and yeah. see my friends. And I do want to go back to Indonesia again for a month this winter to keep up that, uh, that momentum right. that I had started over there. So yeah, a lot of good things with the album especially. Awesome. I'm really excited to get it out. I look forward to hearing it. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I'd like to end all my interviews with uh, three interesting or random facts about yourself that many people might not know. Okay. Uh, well, um, one thing, I participated for two quick years in the Miss America pageant. Okay. Uh, I fell into that accidentally and I did it for the last two years of eligibility, so when I was 22 and 23, right? And I, uh, I made top 10 in Miss Connecticut nice. both years, which was crazy. It was a whirlwind, but I learned, I mm -hmm. learned a lot. It was really, really fun. Nice. Um, I like to travel. Uh, I speak Spanish, okay. so I've traveled to a bunch of different countries, maybe a dozen plus. Uh, South America, Europe, Africa, mm -hmm. Asia, of course. Um, so that's one of my passions. And I'm Muslim. All right. Alhamdulillah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, if you want to check out Ashley, please visit the link below. And now we'll cut to a performance from Ashley Hamill. So thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Well, the clock strikes twelve and one and five. Looks like it's getting time for you to come around.
Thank you so much for having me. Give it up for you at the Mosque of the